Hi there, I'm Black Bright, and if it's the first time you're visiting my channel, welcome, subscribe, share and like. Give me the thumbs up if you like what I'm talking about. I tend to talk about a variety of subjects from, oh, I don't even know, from immigration to what anything that I think might be of interest to other people. Today, um, I decided to, I've been meaning to do this video for a while. Um, it's about all the rule changes and the fee increases and to do with whether or not it's going to having a P in the radio station to um, the motorway to MOT. I mean, there's so many changes. So I'm sure out of all of these, um, what I'm going to share with you, one of them is going to affect you or you'll be interested to know about it. So let's soldier on. Um the first one I'm going to tell you is about the dentist. Um, this, the, the, if you're exempt or on benefits, it won't apply to you. But uh, band one has been increased from £21.60 to £22.70. Band two from £59.10 to £62.10. Band three from £256.50 to £269.30. I wonder why they don't round off those figures. I don't quite get that. Anyway. Toilets are free to use in all major train stations run by Network Rail. So, you know, when you're in those big stations and you're dying for a pee, and then when you get to the toilet, you realise you have to put 20p in or a pound in, and you're like, you're going to pee yourself? You don't have to worry about that anymore. Because now, they're all free, but only in the Network Rail. That's the big, major stations. Not in your little... I mean, some of them are free, but this is definitely free. You don't have to worry about that. Income tax is an oldie but goodie. You probably know this one, actually. You can earn up to 12500 before paying income tax, and that's up from 11850 a year. Tax threshold before 40% kicks in has been bumped up from 46350 to 50000 for those earning a nice, healthy salary. Um, it means you can earn £240 more a week or get an income of more than £240 a week without paying taxes, providing it's your sole course source of income. Porn sites, for those of you naughty, naughty fellas, or naughty, naughty women. Oh, you're not so naughty. Anyway, for those who have preferences for porn sites, you're now going to have to submit your driving license details on your passport information or buy a voucher from a participating store, as if you're going to go up to a store and say, can I have a voucher for a porn site? Anyway, that's what they're suggesting is going to happen. Um, I guess it will force uh, people to seek their sexual stimulation elsewhere, or people might not might not be bothered about giving their details. Um, pay slips. Workers now have a legal right to have a pay slip. New laws will force employers to provide standard details on a payslip. Firms will now have to send payslips to anyone classified as workers, including self-employed, freelancers and contractors. Well, you know before, when you used to work for somebody, like if you was a decorator or a painter or um, a gardener, anything, you would... You could just go in and work and you would be responsible for paying your own taxes and doing all that kind of stuff. Now they're suggesting that employers have to issue a payslip. It's mandatory. They have to issue a payslip. So you know you won't be able to be doing all this undercover stuff. It's all going to be kind of streamlined. Um, I'm not quite sure how this works for those cash-only practices, though. You know when you go and do your nails and they... So you go in there, you, they only accept cash, and, you know, who's monitoring them? How, how are they paying? They're, they're, how are they paying? I'm sure they're not giving out any pay slips. Anyway, um, universal credit, the amount you can earn before benefits are taken back is now 1000 but it only applies to families with disabled dependents or dependent children. So basically, if you've got dependent children or you're disabled, you can have an income of up to £1,000 before they start taking away your benefits. Immigration, tier two exemptions for nurses, 30000 threshold, new business startups, 2 million investment, but 2 million investment 
is now up to five years. Yeah, I think the two, yeah, you know, with the two tier two exemptions for nurses, they're now exempt from the 30,000 threshold. So they don't have to earn that much because it's actually impossible for them to get that much. Um, car rules. This might be interesting for some of you. Car tax rates are increasing again in 2019, marking the third consecutive year they have done so in the UK. Rates for vehicle excise duty will increase in line with inflation this year. And the announcement was quietly made in the autumn budget of 2018. In the budget, it confirmed that from 1st of April 2019, Vehicle excise duty rates for cars, vans and motorcycles will increase in line with RPI. This could add between £5 and £65 on the cost of your annual VED bill, vehicle excise duty. So here is, here's how much you're going to have to pay based on your tax brand, uh, 76 G um, oblique KM and 150G oblique KM CO2, you're going to pay an additional £5. Um, 151 to 170G oblique KM CO2 plus £15. 171-190G oblique KM CO2 plus £25. 191-225G oblique KM CO2 plus £40 and 226-255G oblique KM CO2 plus £55 and 255G oblique KM CO2 plus £65. So, you have to add that to your budget now. Graduated driving license. Now, this is for people who have newly passed their test. Um, in 2018, it was proposed that newly passed motorists could be given a graduated driving license, which would impose certain restrictions in a bid to make new drivers safer. New qualified motorists are at the most risk on the roads, they claim, as having the least experience. So, Here's a list of the restrictions for you newly qualified drivers that the RAC believes the graduated license should focus on. Curfews. Times when they are allowed to be on the road. It's like little old ladies, isn't it? And little old men. You know, they have to get the bus at certain times. Similar. Passengers. Limited for how many passengers a new driver can have. So what difference does it make if you're one person or two or three person are in a car? I guess they're saying that less people will be at risk. Speed. Separate low speed limits to other drivers. So if you've just newly qualified, you're going to be restricted to driving at a certain speed limit. Engine sizes. Limits on how powerful their cars can be. So you can't be a new driver and get, you know, like a... Porsche or one of those fast cars, you can't do that, a Lamborghini or whatever. Mandatory P plates, these are currently optional, but these could be made mandatory for up to two years. And alcohol, lower limits than the general driving population if you're a new driver. So then we have smart motorways. Smart motorway lane closures are signified by a red X and motorists who fail to abide by the rules will face a £100 fine and three penalty points. Closed lanes marked by a red X are strictly off limits and the government is now considering strict penalties for drivers who flout the rules, including fines of up to £100 and three penalty points. Um, a closed lane generally means that there has been an incident or a broken down vehicle blocking the road. So ignoring the red X could be extremely dangerous. Pension credit. This means tested benefit is awarded based on earnings. And from April 2019, both pension credit payments will rise 2.4%, the CPI rate of inflation, guarantee credit. 
the first part of the pension credit will subsequently increase from £163 a week to £167.25 a week. Oh. I'm not going to let that alarm continue like the other one. Drive me nuts. Anyway, and from £248.80 to £255.25 for a couple. The second part savings credit will see it can rise from 13 point forty to thirteen pounds seventy two for a single person and from fourteen pound ninety nine to fifteen pound thirty five a week for a couple. Not giving much away, bloody forty P a week. Uh, personal lifetime allowance. The pen the pension lifetime allowance, I put personal up there, it should be pension. The pension lifetime allowance is a maximum amount that you can get, that you can put into your retirement savings without it being taxed. It increases based on the rate of CPI inflation, which means that from next year, the pension lifetime allowance will increase from 10030 that's not 1000 you know. It's one of those, you know, with those lots of noughts. So one comma zero three zero comma thousand. Two one zero one comma zero five five zero comma thousand. So that's one million hundred and thirty thousand. Anyway, I'm gonna put the link in the description. You know me and my numbers. Uh, according to which, this, which is the magazine, this means an extra 24,800 in tax-free pension savings that you can make. So that's probably a million. And new drone laws from November 2019, that's coming up in a few months, new drone rules will come into effect impacting users. The new laws will make it illegal to fly a drone weighing more than 20, 250 grams without first registering with the Civil Aviation Authority and passing online safety checks. Uh, what else? We have overtaking cyclists. We've got quite a few here, you know. Overtaking cyclists can be a nightmare as they zigzag in and out of cars. We all know that. However, the Highway Code's insistence Cars should leave a decent distance between them and cyclists when passing 1.5 metres. What is wrong with my phone? It's hotline today. Um, what time is it? Oh, I don't mean to cut the time because I know I've got the point. Oh, well, it's not yet anyway. Anyway, following law changes in March... Motors could be fined for not leaving enough space between a vehicle and a bike. Failure to do so could land you with a £100 fine and three points on your licence. Police forces across the country are being encouraged to penalise those who drive dangerously close to cyclists. So the cyclists, be careful. I know it's hard because the thing is, is that what happens when they drive close to you? You know, it's not a question of you not driving close to them. They tend to try and squeeze and go zigzag in and out. So we're being penalised as motorists against cyclists who drive near your car. That doesn't make sense to me. Okay, learners, drivers on the motorway. I think I mentioned a bit um, about this before. But before motorists were only allowed to drive on the motorway once they'd passed their full driving tests, but they are now allowed to get on the country's largest and busiest roads as a part of their lesson. As long as they have qualified instructor who has dual controls in the car. It is to give them a better feel for driving on the carriageways, but it is not yet compulsory. That's true, you know, because you're, when you do your driving test, you kind of do all these little local roads, and then you're expected to hit the motorway, and you've got no experience of it. So I think that's quite a good thing. Recently qualified drivers could only face changes once they have passed with the government even considering bringing in a gradual driving license. Currently new drivers 
who have been behind the wheel for less than two years face stronger penalties for offences like using a mobile phone. However, a whole range of restrictions could be imposed. I think this is what I said before, though. I'm not going to repeat that. But a pilot scheme for graduated licences will be tested in Northern Ireland from 2019 to 2020. This could lead to it being rolled out in England if successful. MOT rules, I've done a, I did a video on this. Um, there are new categories for defects with cars with drivers will have to understand, which drivers will have to understand. Dangerous, that is direct risk to road safety or the environment, results in a fail. Major, could affect safety or the environment, results in a fail. Minor, no effect on safety, but could, should be repaired as soon as possible. Advisory, could have an effect in the future, pass, meets the current legal standards. A variety of new requirements are also being included in the MOT for the first time. These include un underinflated tyres, contaminated brake fluid, brake pad warning lights and missing brake pads or discs, reversing lights for vehicles newer than September 2009 and daytime running lights for vehicles newer than March 2018. The diesel car tax is increasing. The tax rate of diesel cars was increased from April the 1st this year. This applies to vehicle excise duty, usually known as road tax. Instead of being fixed at £140 a year, vehicle excise duty rates will now be calculated based on the carbons on the car's carbon dioxide emissions. The highest raise of first year tax is £500 for cars which emit between 191 and 225g of CO per year. However, those which emit the more environmentally friendly 111 to 130g oblique KM will see their tax go up by £40. National minimum wage for sleep-ins. So, you know, people who work nights and they, are, well, they work nights, but they're usually carers. And they go into homes and they're actually just in the house to sleep. And make sure that they have a presence just in case something goes wrong with the client or the patient. Well, now what they're suggesting is that, um, what certain organisations are suggesting is that they should be paid the minimum wage, even though they're sleeping. But the Court of Appeal says people working nights, sleep in, sleep in shifts, such as nurses and care workers, are not entitled to the minimum wage for time spent asleep, where they were available for work and not actually working. The Court of Appeal says people working sleep in shifts such as nurses and care workers, are not entitled to national minimum wage for time spent asleep where they were available for work but not actually working. But I would have thought, you know, if that is your job, to be in the presence of somebody who's sleeping, whether you're sleeping or not, that shouldn't make a difference. Anyway, there's probably some, something in there that I don't quite understand. A request to appeal this decision was lodged with the Supreme Court by unison and a decision is expected in late 2019. And the last one, you'll be glad to know, is non-disclosure agreements. A review into the use of non-disclosure agreements in the workplace is expected in 2019. These, are, these agreements, otherwise known as gagging clauses, were originally used to protect intellectual property but they're often used to silence claims of harassment and bullying. So, I'm exhausted. So that gives you enough to work on. Um, I think I've kind of captured most of them all. They did have some new um, rules for golf 
and um, football, but I think I don't think any of you are going to be really interested in that. Nah, I'm not going to say that one. So yeah, I'm just going to leave it there. Bye.